Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the block three of the PBM course, EMM PM003. Today, we move to another important area of the PBM course. We will be covering brand management in the next four units. Today's uh, unit would be on the concepts of branding and its evolution going forward to brand equity, then building uh, brand building blocks, and then to brand architecture and brand extension. Today's uh, unit, we are going to focus only on the fundamentals of brand management uh, concepts and the strategic relevance of branding. Uh, what makes brand name uh, important for the marketer and how what kind of policy decisions can be adopted for branding uh, the products or services. We will also look into how to in, in, in name our brand, what kind of a framework can be used for a brand name selection. And we will also talk about something regarding building brands, going on to a concept called brand image and its dimensions. And uh, further, we we'll wind up with branding of commodities. Let's look at the first one. So, as we look into that concept of brand, what is a brand? When somebody is looking at a brand, what do we mean by that? And what kind of what kind of a uh, strategic importance does it have? Just to put things into uh, perspective, according to AMA, they consider brand as a name or a term or a logo or a symbol uh, or a combination of thoughts or some combination of all these factors which is attached to a given product or service so that you can differentiate it from the rest of the uh, sellers and offer it to the market uh, to the consumers to meet their requirements so but the concept the simple concept that we talk about brand is as a need as a term or a symbol has uh, gone way past its uh, uh, importance today. If you see, currently we look at brand as a branding as a process and brands which contribute more towards the stakeholders' values. And we look into concepts like brand value. What is its significance in terms of the uh, contributing to the uh, the business objective as an asset? So the process of branding is basically to identify, or of course it is done with an objective to identify what your offers are, offering unique distinctions of points of comparison or points of differentiation as we call them, and then helps us to position the brands to the end users. If you look into the kind of uh, engagement that the branding process it is, a, it is not only a process, it is a tool, it is also a strategic decision that uh, a firm talks about and we look into its orientation which has got an impact cutting across all aspects of the uh, organization. So when we talk about the functions of a brand today when we say uh, let's say butter as a brand so it, it has it connotes certain things when we talk about uh, Apple uh, or we talk about iPhone when we talk about uh, Samsung uh, yeah, you know, we have the range of smartphones, S20, S40, S70, whatever it is. We talk about certain functions that the brand wishes to um, en engage with the customers. Of course, there are different ways in which we'll be branding and something which we will talk about as we go through. What is captured in a brand is obviously their functional and symbolic aspects uh, which are uh, captured to offer to the customers at large. Another important area for any marketer is to see that, yes, we can name some brands, we can bring them to the market, we can connect it with the customers, but as well, but we also need to ensure that these brands are successful. So when you create a brand, we would look into also brand systems. So while we are coding the identity of the brand, we also look into the long-term perspectives what the brand is going to sustain from a business perspective. We also look into branding over a period of time across different geographical locations and so that we can leverage out of having brands which really makes the portfolio strong in terms of the marketability of the uh, products and services. 
So just to name a few, what are the various functions of a brand? You can see the functional obviously is a, we look into the utility functions to benefit the customers. Uh, another key function that it forms, as I told you, is that whenever you name something, so among, let's say you name iPhone among other smartphones, you are identifying it by a unique name with alphanumeric uh, kind of a connotation. And then it does too, uh, helps, it serves as an identification, as a recognition factor. Uh, it is like I go into the sea of people and say that I'm so and so with my name, it gives me certain identification. So brands definitely has been identification. And furthermore, it has to be serving certain benefits to the customers. It also serves as a kind of guarantee. Now, obviously, whenever you see registered marks, when it, when it comes from, let's say, uh, a very author, uh, uh, a very well-established brand like Tata's or Reliance, it also shows a certain amount of guarantee that their products and services have got something built into it in terms of a guarantee which the people can, uh, you know, go for. In terms of practicality, we also look into, uh, if you see, if I offer products without brand names, just, just like that, it may take time for them to register and will not be able to uh, you know, convey what it stands for. So for it becomes so it becomes easier for people to identify with that and can take a action. Looking into, from the continuity point of view, obviously we look into the, as I told you, the satisfaction that customers get after using a brand is not just one transaction. It translates into a longer relationship and uh, it helps you to consolidate the image in the uh, with the customers as well as the other stakeholders. We can also use the brands to get better leverage in the marketplace. We will not, not only that, as I told you, brands can be are to be considered as assets. Assets from the sense that Yes, if we have certain brands in the portfolio, it becomes an asset for the company. For example, in Nestle, Maggie is a big uh, asset to them because obviously you can optimize the business opportunities utilizing the capability of the brand Maggie. Similarly, in case of other products, you will find that there are brands which have dominated, which have become successful brands and the company can leverage out of their uh, image in the marketplace. It also gives you a sense of satisfaction and gives you a certain kind of pleasure to be associated if you look at it from a consumer perspective. That if I'm associated with a brand X, it gives me a personal satisfaction. Uh, very all uh, those brands which talk about if I'm if I'm an owner of Mercedes, obviously it gives me a kind of a hedonic pleasure. It gives me some kind of pleasure of being associated with the brand. These days, with a lot of efforts where companies are looking ahead for better products, ethical standards, legal sanctity, uh, brands definitely help them in uh, giving that legal sanctity, that protection that it requires. It also ensures that they are following ethical standards. So whenever brands are registered or trademarked, we are always, con we are always convinced as a consumer that they are into ethical standard practices and will not do something which can go haywire against the, uh, the, the customer. So when we look into, uh, and RANS uh, definitely gives you the uh, advantage of uh, being visible in the marketplace and obviously a portfolio of very strong brands definitely leads you to have a proper positive image associated with the organization. So the, the impact of branding today is much more strategic than what it was functionally uh, or it was originally thought of. If you see Leslie Chiratani, he defined brand as a cluster of functional and emotional values that enables a purse, uh, that enables a promise to be made about a unique and welcome experience. So whenever we look into any kind of a product, a, a brand, it is like almost a promise that the company is giving for you to experience to relish to be able to identify with to be able to differentiate with and obviously whenever this particular when we are clubbing that with uh, the various brand elements the logo the tagline the slogan obviously it impacts it gives an, an, an impact in the minds of the uh, people about that what kind of a company stands for. 
So whether it's a corporate brand, as a product brand, or as a service brand, it definitely talks about a lot of emotional values apart from the class of functional values it represents. Um, over the years, firms like Interbrand, which are based, which are consulting, uh, which is a brand consulting firm based out of uh, London, UK, uh, they have been able to understand the value of brand and come up with uh, ratings of brands across the globe. And you will find that many companies are able to uh, you know, position themselves better in terms of brand value. Brand value is nothing but uh, the equity of a brand expressed in certain financial terms. And you can understand that if I have a cluster of brands, uh, what is the worth of my brand? It will be primarily depending upon what kind of brand value it carries. So they come up with these, um, uh, you know, the, the, the cluster of uh, companies having different kind of brands, what kind of brand value they have. And these are very critical to a shareholder because whenever you're looking into a robust uh, brand uh, visibility, they always try to see that it has got a positive impact from the market and you can leverage out of it in terms of the investment uh, that the company is planning to make or be a part of the investment process of the growth story of, of a company. Uh, there are also important brands in their portfolios, in any portfolio, contributes towards having a competitive advantage over the competition. Because one of the base element, why do we brand a product or a service or an entity or an event or an idea is primarily because we want not to create very a point of differentiation from the competitors. And so obviously strong, powerful brand uh, associations can help us register better competitive advantage in the marketplace and helps us in sustenance of the brand over a longer period of time. I've already told you that when you're looking into global brands, you will find that how you're managing the brand. So it's not only there are three three buckets as I look at it. One is the creation of the brand. So it's the nurturing or building of the brand. Then you're talking about brand management. And then you're talking in terms of the handling the criticalities. When we talk about the brand architecture, it's something which we will talk about in, in future interactions. So consumers understand when consumers and they look at different kind of, if you got the brand value chain today, they look into the consumer, the, the company, of course, and then the uh, stakeholders. The stakeholders are the shareholders and the investors and the big public who are interested in the brands today. So right across all these domains, the brand engages and become has become a strategic focus to render better services or to uh, which stands for better services, better quality, better assurances, and also a good feel, goodwill factor uh, in the minds of the people. And uh, at a product level, definitely manufacturers have gained by translating, by using uh, branding as a concept for differentiating their products in the marketplace effectively by looking out to, by reaching out to various segments in the marketplace. There are certain policy level decisions which one can take in terms of uh, branding. So broadly, if you can see here, it can be taken up. What branding must have is a few things that branding must have. As you can see it here, the manufacturer's name, of course, if possible, but it not, not necessarily all brands have the manufacturing name, a manufacturer's name. Another thing is you need to know is that a distributor or adopt a mix of two. So the origin where you are coming from needs to be there because it helps in identification in the marketplace. There are a few policies, the level decisions which are, which are taken with respect to the brand. One is obviously the family brand name, which extends the family name to new products. The other one is the individual brand name, a practice which is done for most of the products like the FMCG sector for their products. So let's look at some of the options which are available to the marketers today. The manufacturer branding policy is a very common policy which where the uh, strategy is to uh, build in on the company's reputation so that you know people can have a fix to people who have seen the, uh, the company grow from small to big or to a larger firm they've been able to understand the story better they've been able to understand how it functions so it makes sense to associate 
the manufacturer's brand name into your uh, branding policy. For example, when you talk about Hero Motors, when you talk about uh, Bajaj, if you talk about uh, Raymond, Tata, Reliance, Adani, the kind of reputation the company has utilized the resources and have built a very strong, uh, powerful name for themselves uh, in the businesses does have a positive rub off and of course with natural resources too um, has a positive rub off on the market when you talk about market the consumers and the stakeholders and of course the other competitors also look up to it with a lot of uh, you know, uh, admiration so if you talk about HUL has not built a reputation just like that right so or hero motors if you talk about um, Birla they all have successfully been using their mar the marketers, the manufacturer's name to attain better acceptance from the marketplace. Another way of looking at it is a family branding, where you know you can come up with different brands here. Where if you are dealing with a lot of brands, what you can do is you can make certain uh, brands stronger and grow under them other products. So you can bring in more products under one name and it's an established brand name and then you can grow that. But the point is, while building the brand, one has to see that the brand is able to uh, offer the, 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 the successes in terms of uh, quality, in terms of uh, meeting the customer requirements are, are more appreciated by the people. They're able to understand, they're able to understand what the brand stands for and it's got a positive vibe from the market. Only then perhaps you can uh, enhance the uh, enhance the existing trust and the reliability of the uh, of the brand amongst the consumers. Uh, of course, the brand knowledge among the consumers is also critical because if it's a good brand, people can see the brand knowledge is, is good. So you can always leverage on the existing brand name's uh, success story and can come up with new products which are offered to the market. Uh, however. It has its own uh, disadvantage. Like for example, if it within the family, if they if some of the products don't do well, it might have a negative rub off on the uh, the, the base uh, products. Uh, but some of the well known brands, as you can see, uh, something like uh, Dove. Uh, so they have been able to go from a moisturizing cream, a soap to shampoos across various product categories, so face wash and deodorants. So when you are extending, or Maggi for that matter, it is also extended into from noodles to soups to, uh, you know, uh, the, we talk in terms of uh, the ketchups. Uh, what has our millets today, millets has become a very important part of that. So you'll find that the brand Maggi has also cut across different product categories, leveraging on that. Uh, their existing brand. Uh, so family branding is almost like an umbrella. So it is also called umbrella branding, which spreads the positiveness across the new products. It also helps strategically because it helps to the consumers identify because they have a known brand and they can always utilize that for, and their expectations are that, okay, it would stand up for the same level of uh, success that the, other, uh, the parent company, the parent brand was, and obviously it helps in uh, registering positive vibes with the market. Individual branding policy is basically another policy which is taken for where we are branding the products or services individually. And they could you could use it by the functional uh, parameters which are there, mostly followed by the FMCG sector performers in the marketplace, like Unilever, Procter Campbell, Taba, ITC, where they come across individual uh, pro product name to propagate them. But then point is, it is slightly uh, difficult from the other, from the family blanket name because in family blanket, we already have a brand which is already established, which is already got a kind of a leverage with the customers. But in this case, it could be like a new branding that you are doing and starting from the scratch, you have to build it from the scratch. Uh, but it has its own uh, advantages too, though it is expensive, but once you are brand image is built in an individual policy, you can always leverage out of the, uh, the brand name. And you can also, obviously going forward, you can also grow under that few other brands as an umbrella brand. So 
So these are not watertight compartments that only if I am adopting one type of branding policy, I cannot do the same. For different products, depending upon the market requirements, you can leverage the branding policy. Now coming to the other part type of branding policy, which is for the distributor. You must have seen that uh, online grossers, uh, online uh, grossers like Grofer, this big basket, uh, Reliance Smart, they have been able to consolidate the uh, marketplace in terms of the distributor's brand policy because they've been able to convince people and have been able to give more uh, stronghold to the brands which they are representing. At the same time, we also have, if you are talking about uh, the, uh, the various distributor brands, they also are having certain disadvantages. Disadvantages like they're not always present everywhere and of course, they need to have strengths and people, customers need to have confidence in it. In this, what happens, the, uh, their success is uh, primarily driven by the products that they showcase. So the products that they showcase in this case would be the manufacturer's brand. So how strong the manufacturer brand, based on that, the, uh, you know, their, their, their reputation is, that, uh, is uh, based. We can also, um, look at some of the risks which are associated with uh, the strategy one can lose control over product market for example if i'm a marketer if i'm if my distributor point branding is very very strong that if i'm making it available at my distributor's brand obviously the brand the distributor brand gets more leverage than me so obviously it may uh, the premium would go to the distributor and uh, less to the manufacturer this has also given rise to private, private level brands, which has become a problem for the many manufacturer brands in the marketplace. <clears throat> the other one is a mixed policy, where you could have, as I told you before, all these strategies are not watertight compartments. So one can use it effectively across, depending upon the emerging scenarios. Now let's look into what is a brand name and uh, why is so much of you and cry are made out of the brand name what does it represent right and uh, of course a brand name as i told you before it's it is either a term or a symbol uh, what that distinguishes one product or service from the others and uh, bringing in a name as first uh, is, is, an, is it's okay but the point is how do you manage it that becomes a very crucial part of the next process so generally as i told you it could be branding names could mean uh, when you talk about uh, choosing a brand name it could mean many things it could mean that you are relating the product to what it represents and uh, for uh, are we not represent for example there are brands which talks in terms of functional ideas for example uh, move on uh, when you talk about um, ray ban so they are functional so they the utilities and sometimes they may not even talk about what kind of functionalities they represent uh, class examples are there right? like sprite or uh, pepsi pepsi of course has got a company's name built into it i'm coming to that uh, but there may not be any specific uh, reasons why a particular brand name has been used the name of uh, the manufacturer in the product for example i was talking about Bata, titan tata uses a lot of manufacturer brands in their branding because they feel that the initial uh, way or uh, way of entering gives a lot of leverage to the brand because the, na the name Tata uh, has in India at least uh, gives a lot of uh, sanctity, a lot of legality, a lot of ethicality, a lot of quality assurances to the consumers. Hence, they can, they would like to leverage on it. Uh, you can also have brand names, which is a combination of alphanumerical parameters, like in the case of two wheelers market, uh, XEZ, uh, or we talk about the CPC, or the, you know, we're talking in terms of L80, those kind of things. Uh, even iPhones 15, something like that. Further, as I've already told, we can also represent the functionality. Apart from that, you also have that certain brands, uh, while naming, they, they become very, very generic. Over a period of time, what happens, it becomes so well associated with the product concept that um, it becomes almost very generic in nature. Case in point, very strongly we had talked about, about is Xerox. 
Xerox is actually the, is a brand name, but what does it stand for as a photocopier, photocopying machines. So in their offering, when they came up with photocopy machines, it got almost synonymous with the uh, brand name of the company. So today when you talk about Xerox, Xerox is equal to photocopy. Nobody says photocopiers, they talk in terms of Xerox. In fact, some of the in B2B uh, negotiations, they are in case of, uh, you must have seen the tender notices. They try to say that we need X amount of Xerox uh, photocopy, Xerox machines. So that by itself speaks volumes about the kind of credibility that the brand has. And it has become, though it is a photocopier, but we represent it by the generic name. Many other examples are there, like Surf, uh, you know, Dalda, uh, we talk in terms of Tempo, which are uh, in case of some of the markets, we talk in terms of the Kodak. Kodak has also become almost synonymous uh, as, a generic, as a generic name. And uh, yes, this it has got certain positive rubber, but over a period of time, it becomes difficult to manage it, and uh, they it it serves as a it serves the um, the purpose of dif not dif of differentiating very less as you move on. It becomes very general, so that's something which is an extreme part of it. But a good brand name definitely is a. A strong point for any company because it has positive rub up in terms of recognition status uh, that it imparts to the consumer's mind and the buyers obviously uh, look up to that while taking shopping decisions or while taking decisions to buy and uh, obviously consistently if you are using the brand a good brand name it it uh, a brand name which is got a good uh, acceptance due to its continued uh, image you can associate with repeat with future businesses. You can also look into the confidence of the market in those brands which you are holding, and can you can have better things in life. Uh, obviously, in India, it is mandatory to or like elsewhere, it is important to register the brand because it can be uh, confiscated. So it makes sense for every company to uh, to put it under a registration or a legal framework so that you know, we can take away the positive parameters associated with the brand. Next we move into the brand name selection. In this, this is a uh, very well example has been given in your books, but I would just talk, up, just talk upon some of the parameters as we go through. So when, as you know, the name selection process is a very, very uh, elaborate process. It's not so simple to come up with a name. It's not just picking up any name and doing it to do the product that it represents. So it is associated. It is many many things are uh, advocated for uh, in terms of certain values. So here is one such thing. We look across the. We try to find out certain prepare checkpoints for different values that can be contained in a name. For example, the associational value. So what do we do? We pick up certain qualities of the product and the association of the name to which. It is likely to establish so qualities of the product as well as the association of the name okay, what kind of a name we would like to establish then we link it with the various of uh, aspects of uh, parameters of satisfaction which are related to those qualities so and they are put up in form of a priority as you can see here in form of attribute a b c depending upon the importance the list is prepared Memorization. Similarly, like the same thing we followed for the name, which can be made to rhyme in or meaning. It meaning something which is which is which are very common, where the audience can easily identify with, or uh, you know, uh, ghadi. For example, ghadi, ghadi, everybody can understand. So, it, so this is the kind of um, the memorization value which can be associated with the naming process. Then comes the descriptional value how what kind of product qualities need to be described according to the consumer preferences you can draw inferences from the customer feedbacks and can see how would they like to use these products so we are talking about the description of value similarly like the attribute we talk in terms of the description value also talks about the attribute a or b or c talking in terms of the description of value next comes the motivational value what happens here is that the, 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 the respondents, the consumers uh, get motivated to buy a particular brand based on certain motivational value that is associated with the name. 
So if you're talking about Tata's, for example, it has got that motivation to buy. Suppose you say KFC, KFC has got that Colonel Anderson's uh, name to go by to, 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 access, to make it more motivated to buy. So once you have done that, and of course, all these four parameters of associated value, mem memorizational value, descriptional value, and motivational value, they can be itself, if they are well thought of and well listed out, that will also lead to a repurchase value. So while you are going through the process, it has to be understood that what kind of association value, what kind of descriptive, what kind of uh, uh, memorizational value and motivation uh, being stronger will render a, a stronger repurchase value. Next, we go for the third step, second step that is to search for names. Now for the possible, we have to now search for the list of possible names that can be given to the product and to fulfill the objectives which has been outlined in the first step in terms of associational value, descriptional value, motivational value. And the third part is that we are able to assign certain differential ratings as you can see here across these four values that we are talking about, you will find that we have associated with a differential rating. That means if somebody is giving a rating of zero, or uh, in the case of an associated value comes lower, then comes the unassociated or don't know neutral associated and highly associated. So differing upon the kind of percentage of responses that we get from the customer, we can club it under the various ratings. Now once these ratings are there, <coughs> similarly we will do it for all the uh, associated tests, uh, value tests, right? So what you need to do is make a list where you are talking about the, uh, the, uh, the list of qualities and attributes are laid out in the checkpoints is one and on the other side we are talking about product attributes of the, uh, on the other side and then we are talking in terms of the, the names which are associated with it. You do the same thing for uh, the other values for the memorizational value, right? So the brand is which are listed in step two, how, how easy they are, they can be shuffled and they can, they, you can bring out which are the names which one you can associate very closely and can put them into the uh, point, right, into the list. Description value, the list of things which are given into the participants, uh, each participant is asked to pick up few attributes, he thinks that the the name the name may contain so all the attributes that you talk about and certain list of names how much of that are people are able to uh, link it up which was been described in the first step similarly with the uh, motivational things so if you're talking about certain points to of motivation what kind of motivators are listed with the certain names so you're trying to associate with the list with the names right now which has been identified Next, we put it into a quadrivalent analysis somewhere we try to see that any one of the parameters is not, is not sufficient enough to, uh, to come up with the potential. So we use mathematical expression like the equation here, MP is equal to AN, MM, DP and MT, where your MM stands, MP stands for marketing potential of a name. What is the potential of a name of registering better, better in the marketplace? An associated value, the memorization value, the DP stands for the descriptional value and the motivational value. Once these parameters are put, which are derived from the step three, then you, you will find that you can put it into a form of a graphic representation as you can see here. This is a three-dimensional program where you are talking a uh, uh, diagram where you are talking about the descriptional value and the memorizable value on one, plat on one platform, uh, association value uh, on the x-axis uh, on the uh, y-axis, whereas your description value on the sorry description value in the y-axis, associative value in the uh, z-axis, and the x-axis taken up by the memorization value. The motivational value is put up in point of a parenthesis uh, in, in the uh, diagram. As you can see, there will be four, if you slice it, 
there will be some four pat patterns which will emerge in terms of the uh, the the, the, uh, the 3d graphic representation of course um, if you take a slice out if you take a midpoint and see where your brands are being uh, names are being focused you will find that as you can see here a and b are in the first quadrant and there are some four quadrants here and if you take this plane there are another additional four so there are eight quadrants so we find most of them are in the desirable position of quadrant one where you're trying to have a very strong memorizable associational and of course descriptional value so on the higher side that is the most desirable but many times it may not happen so which are the you know you derive it and uh, from the scores and put it across in this particular framework once you know which are the ones which you should be focusing you should be deleting the others now you you can go one step further you can go further for slicing it dicing it and make from 8 to you can go up to 16 and you can find out where are the product where are the names which you are suggesting lie but our objective is to find out the right kind of name so we will talk in terms of only the right name maybe two or three which are listed out and try to see what are the attributes that are associated here to take a case in point we talk about the two options which are given to us a and b and you see the number of potential consumers who are associated with the so if you see in the list that is the percentage of people who are associated who have given up certain preferences that has been mapped so from there you can say put out of 100 these are the people who are there and who have talked about a particular attribute in both ways you have for both attribute as well as attribute b but then we divide it by who have only selected for attribute A and then we can find out the proportion of customers who are looking for A in associating with the name uh, with the attribute B. So a name which has got both but it has also got a strong preference towards the attribute A. Similarly you do it for B. If you can do a Venn diagram, if you can put it into a Venn diagram, a set of customers would be people who are having attribute A will be a set of customers who are associate who associate the name to attribute A, and there are also people who a market share which is uh, of customers who associate with attribute B. But there are areas where there could be an intersection between two subsets that people who are looking into attribute A and in the name they're also looking into an attribute B in the name, and that can be a combined area. So that is gives us an area that this is the most viable one which one you should pick it up if you look into the as uh, so from the as uh, the four values that we have talked about a set of four values that we are talking about we can also draw venn diagrams as you can see it in figure three and can work out which are again the areas of intersection the more the area of intersection the more those names should be selected for the brand so that is how a brand can be a brand name can be logically selected and can be taken forward. Next, we move to how to build a brand. Now, brand building, once you create a brand uh, in the marketplace and offer it in the marketplace, it becomes important to also build the brand. So, if you remember that in consumer behavior, we talk in terms of consumer insights. So whenever uh, we carry out a research, we try to bring in those elements to identify who are the customer groups, what kind of segments we should be looking at, what are their expectations and needs, and then which ones we are trying to, we should be taking it forward in terms of targeting and then forward it with the, uh, the, with the branding process associated with the branding. We also can be looking at the competitive activity thus how competitive is active in the field that we are trying to enter or we are trying to offer new brands in the marketplace so when you're building a brand these are the fundamentals one has to take into account looking into what is the customer what is their item what kind of needs and preferences they have and what kind of competition that we are having what can the other brands which are existing in that space and then look into developing further in terms of customizing that product, associating with the right kind of imagery, with the right kind of term, the name, the logo, and, for, and of course, support it with the pricing strategy, 
and we, we should also look into it that whether the, the imagery that we are trying to uh, associate is that really registering with the cons consumers or not for that we need to have a very sustained uh, and a very powerful communication strategy to propagate the brand through various uh, medium be it the social medium or the traditional medium as we call it uh, to achieve their objective furthermore today we are as we are looking into these because these are uh, consumer based uh, interpretations which bring into the branding process so we also look into a consumer connect because consumer connect helps us in building the uh, the first level you know the affiliability affability with the consumers and once it registers it becomes better in terms of the functional values and the consumer engagement uh, and the, the emotional and the functional attributes engage the customer more and more and thereby what happens there uh, the customer confidence in the brands increase then comes the total brand manage, uh, management where we're talking in terms of the architectures how to make it available how to make it over how to manage it over a period of time and the output obviously is in terms of marketing look into the what kind of brand market share does it hold and uh, how many customers what kind of market share does it have which are markets they are getting it from uh, how much of the customers are associating or resonating with the the, the, uh, the brands that have been offered how profitable are these brands are they losing market are they getting more markets are they able to reach out to more geographical location help us in geographical uh, footprints uh, all these things can be captured in terms of an output uh, and our marketing strategies can also be aligned to okay, like looking into how the brand is perceived in the marketplace of course if a brand man if a brand image is able to we can leverage on the brand image we can also ensure customer retention for a longer period of time and we also need to enhance the knowledge of the brand amongst its uh, among the stakeholders so not only among the consumers but also among the stakeholders so when you look into brand building exercise obviously we take inputs from various not only the consumers but when it is being rolled out how the brand is perceived by their trade channel members by the competitors what kind of threat perception do we see right it helps us to understand the uh, the brand's big uh, delivery the goods that it is intended to and we can also get into understanding the from the customer engagement perspective how satisfied are the customers when they're engaging with this what kind of target customers are engaging with the custody brand and can we take it to a different level altogether and uh, go for more customer relationship management and give more life to our brands as we move forward so the customer lifetime value of course increases and of course the brands also register well with the customers so resonate well with the customers so we talk about uh, the brand resonance uh, pyramid right from it the focus is on how to build the brand in such a manner that the customer engagement is not necessarily only at a very functional level but at a very higher level where they uh, feel that the fit that the, the, the image fits into the requirements of the customers and there's a very high level uh, degree of engagement or association with the brand of course another thing that we do is in terms of the uh, which which helps us in brand building is the brand strength score by making the brand more visible across the geographical location so we, we do assessments of that on a continuous basis and uh, when we take feedback from the customers again i told you that it's not just one in a while we are we build it over a period of time we take inputs from the retailers from the and we get market intelligence from how they are, they are performing vis -a with the other um, competitors we see the impact factors of various uh, uh, manager the marketing communication tools that we use uh, by looking into the analytical data tons and tons of data are uh, data is correct, collected from various sources and the using various AI algorithms or machine learning techniques or analytical tools uh, we can also calibrate as to how that particular information can be the data point can be used further to take marketing decisions 
Next, we move into a very important part of brand image. Brand image is something which has been uh, is a kind of a perceived value of a, of the customer or what the customers perceive about the the what the brand is standing for in their minds. Right? It could be because of their uh, usage or because of certain kind of uh, information that has traveled to them. Based on that, the uh, brand image is. Uh, form obviously brand image if it is distinct if it is uh, it has got a goodwill it has got a reputation it always uh, helps the helps the company that the brand image is good for having a very strong brand image always helps to render better products or better engagement with the customer a better engagement with the consumers as well as with the other uh, members who are associated with the brand uh, brand value chain and also with the shareholders which is which is a very very critical point for today's market <clears throat> now what are the dimensions of the brand image when you look into the dimensions of the brand image we can look into it is made up of various kind of uh, it, uh, it's it's a blend of identity which has a symbolic and some functional uh, evaluation in the minds of people and it is often it's a, you know tries to uh, conjure up various kind of uh, emotional feelings, the irrational feelings, the reasons, and so, so forth. So we are looking into various kind of appeals, which which can be associated with the brand image too, in order to look at the uh, damage of brand image. First is the appeal, appeal to reason. Here, what happens is that where the uh, the various functions or the attributes uh, or the uh, the way it is evaluated by the consumers becomes a kind of a appealing factor. So basically you look into why a customer would like to pick up a particular brand. Uh, for example, when you talk about smartphone, why would anybody like to get associated with OnePlus or a Samsung or a iPhone? There is a particular reason for which they do it. So obviously attributes, the features, the benefits that they look forward to is of particular Second, we look into is the sensory part of it because we are not only looking at the functional aspect as I told you, the functional part is there, is important for a consumer's perspective, how it appeals to them, but also important is also what is the kind of sensory uh, aspects, the kind of, for example, the color, the tonality, the, the if you're talking about a music system, it could be the a sound impact, it could be output of a product, in case of a car, the output, the, the the looks, it's a combination of various factors and all these kind of uh, kind of sensitize the, the various sense organs of a person. It makes you feel good, it makes you feel gratified. So product design, when you're looking into product designing, looking into product execution in terms of implementation, uh, in terms of how the product works, all these are looked into while you are building, building, building uh, the how it appeals to the senses. Secondly, is the emotional aspect which I was talking about in the emotional appeals. A feeling of pride. For example, if I'm an owner of a particular Mercedes, it carries that snob value with you. So would I like to get associated with it? And of course, it, it gives you a kind of uh, feeling that uh, yes, you, you are something, you are associated with something good uh, when you're associating with brands. Many of them possess certain brands, not necessarily because of the product it represents, but of the, the 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 psychological impact or the image that is associated with that particular product. Like for example, when I carry iPhone, it's a kind of an endorsement uh, in the society that people look up to. Oh, he's carrying a iPhone, so it has got certain emotional build into it beyond the what the product product may be good invoke whatever uh, it may give whatever it stands for but the kind of feeling that it evokes the, the kind of emotion that it evokes is more psychologically more beneficial to the person hence they go for it maybe paying a premium also doesn't matter so it, it is a big thing when you look a very big insight when you're talking in terms of the emotional connect that you want to bring up with the uh, uh, appeals there's another appeal which we, where research has found out that there's something called a reference appeal that we look for a lot of endorse or uh, kind of um, conformance 
that okay we are appreciated in the society we conform to the society standards so our friends whom we normally refer to which are which constitutes under primary or secondary references we try to see that how they how they look at look up to us so the social prestige when we talk about the motivational if it's in the maslow's need hierarchy there's a social need the social acceptance that you know that is associated with a particular brand definitely lends a kind of a reference appeal to the brand image so these are the some of the components of brand image that one needs to be understood and from a marketing perspective this has this helps us to uh, create a very um, broad uh, goodwill in the minds of the customer and we can leverage it on in the future by engaging with the customers and building more onto the uh, promotion strategies coming into the branding of commodities unlike other consumer products the commodities for example something like salt uh, masalas uh, you know vegetables uh, rice uh, dal all these things if you see these are commodities which have undergone a kind of a branding today so when you are branding uh, a commodity primarily commodities were looked upon one of the major differentiators was the price factor beyond price nothing was looked upon but today thankfully when we are looking into branding of uh, commodities we are looking into what would be the other selling points that needs to be worked upon uh, beyond the pricing uh, uh, or pricing is a point of differentiation so everything boils down to understanding how you want to position the kind of a, a product how do you package it how do you brand it how do you you know what kind of value you pack in uh, to create new uh, kind of usps with your brand so but then brand building of course uh, it calls for a lot of money it it, it it has additional cost and suppose the packaging itself would be a uh, expensive proposition the labeling the advertising the legal protection and this is something which is a, a risk that a brand should uh, have it involves and with the commodity you know it, it becomes important to advocate that in order to establish in the marketplace but it is a risk because obviously you have to take that step ahead to register uh, your brand as a commodity in the marketplace and commodities as you as i told you that you have to play with the price uh, and maybe you do not have so much of a leverage with so much of costs which are associated in building the brands but anyways we have to look into that since others are doing it many competitors are doing it one may have to also to take it up at some point of time because today when you take get a, a, a loose tea versus a packaged tea obviously the packaged tea gets a kind of a better acceptance in the marketplace furthermore you can also uh, <clears throat> like uh, by biscuits uh, local biscuits which are being endorsed you can also trademark them to also give a legal protection to the brand, the brands as a result of it, these commodities can like the haldi from a certain uh, company of course it is patented already but you can uh, x y z haldi may say that haldi rams for example has built from a mixture which is uh, a, which is from a homemade kind of a scenario to something which is a big brand today across various kind of um, snacks and eateries uh, those kind of uh, engagements uh, those kind of product offerings and today the brand name brand has moved from a commodity to become a branded stuff and being able to leverage a premium from the customers so one has to understand that the brand name makes it easier for the marketer to process orders it has got an instant recognition it you are able to differentiate so when you are branding a commodity those are the positives which definitely in there but the critical part is what is it that makes a person move what means that so that insight has to be understood as to what kind of a unique parameter that can be built into the brand so that the commodity registers well with the customer uh, one one should not think that just because commodities have a kind of a uh, homogeneous uh, mass uh, only one type of uh, particular uh, kind of a branding would only talk about one particular aspect of it it can be multi as i told you you need to understand your customers well in terms of how it is being uh, 
consumed, what kind of ways in it can be consumed, and how it can be packaged in, in order to bring out the uh, the differentials. Secondly, also looking to the marketing of the brand because if it can be marketed well across different uh, opportunities which are existing, whether it's an online or an offline or a multi-level marketing, that can also help the brand to leverage the market and the commodities uh, branding. Uh, in the long run, obviously, uh, if that builds up to a very strong community, uh, you know, uh, kind of a strong relationship with the consumers, it can be highlighted as a kind of a, a kind of a differentiator which can sustain for a longer period of time and can help become a kind of an asset to the organization. Now. There are specific consideration for branding in a in a community in a commodity as you, as you can see it here some of the major issues are you have, you should offer sufficient value to customers to induce price sensitivity because mostly commodities uh, have been dealing with only the price as a point of differentiation uh, you get it at a low price and for no needs whatever associated but so but the move from a price to some other aspect it has to be very compelling it has to be very uh, important and relevant to the consumers. Second is that very rightly pointed out is the degree of consumer involvement in that entire process and the buying decision. If the customer is not involved, means these are low involved purchases. So until unless you bring out the finer points in terms of what you are trying to bring out as a differentiator, it will be difficult. Secondly, once you do that, of course, the segmentation part and position seven segmenting, targeting, positioning becomes critical because everybody is, though we consider it homogeneous for a commodity, it may not be so. So you have to segment further depending upon the how the product is, the brand is engaging with the customers. Once these things, uh, the say, STB part is there, then you talk about the other piece which come into the tactical part, where you're talking in terms of how to um, communicate about the various positioning strategies uh, which can help the brand establish better turnover in future and uh, the kind of distribution the the channel members how are they going to stock it on what basis they will do it and uh, uh, today packaging plays a very very important role in uh, in, in the in the promotion of these uh, branded commodities because uh, they are like a silent sales person as we have seen in the product planning process also what needs to be captured in the packaging uh, is, is of crucial importance that is why packaging is considered often as a silent sales person and it also lends a very strong impact in terms of the branding uh, if these brands become bigger like we have seen uh, you know, biscuits or snacks which have been or chips which have been uh, masalas mdh they have all become bigger brands they all started from commodities and today they are a force to reckon with and can become uh, as you move forward a considerable force and generate positive vibes in the marketplace which can be sustained in the longer period of time. Going forward you can look into other geographical these branded stuff can move into the, uh, the online as well as the offline formats. Offline formats they have been there but they have also moved into the online formats and they are uh, opening up the market in terms of uh, their uh, significant return to the customers, to the, to the marketers. So from a marketing investment point of view, so this is a big consideration for branding a commodity. So not only consumer product, but also commodity products branding is of significant importance. So today in, in our class, we looked into what are brands, how they can be named, how they can be built, how they how what is the concept of brand image going forward the brand image also registers in terms of the you know, not only what it does for the consumers in the short run but also across to the shareholders in the long term and establish perhaps what we what we call as brands as assets so today brands are not only just mere a term logo or symbol but it is a much more engaging as a concept and today we look at the business perspective the strategic perspective in terms of the shareholder engagement along with the consumer engagement thank you